And so the reason we want to take this into account is because there's cases where a couple things can happen. First, operating cash flow misses some cash flows. So we're trying to capture everything that's associated with operations, and sometimes operating cash flow misses it. The second, sometimes operating cash flow incorrectly records certain cash flows that don't actually occur in a given period. So operating cash flow counts it in one period when the cash flow actually takes place in a different period. And by incorporating the changes in networking capital, we can essentially straighten out those types of situations. Here's going to be our approach. First, networking capital. What is it? How is it computed? Second, how do we compute the change in networking capital? That triangle is a delta, it means the change. And finally, what we're really interested in is how does the change in networking capital influence cash flows? Because this is what goes into our analysis. So networking capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities. As it says here, it's a balance sheet item. It captures a snapshot at a moment in time. Current assets are equal to cash plus securities plus receivables plus inventories. And they are essentially items on the balance sheet that either are cash or can be easily converted to cash or are expected to be converted into cash in a relatively short period of time. For, pro for project analysis, current liabilities are payables. These are accounts payables, which are equal to accounts payable when the firm goes ahead and makes a purchase. Uh, let's say buys raw materials, and the company that they buy them from says, you don't need to pay us now, but you need to pay us sometime in the next 30 days. Uh, that's a payable. Um, up here, a receivable is an accounts receivable. So when our company, our project, makes a sale to a customer, uh, they'll say to the customer, you don't need to pay us now, uh, but you can need to pay us sometime in the near future, and it goes on the balance sheet as a receivable. Current liabilities includes short-term debt, but since we don't in incorporate into our analysis where money comes from, we're going to ignore that. So for project analysis, these are the five items that are relevant. So we put it all together, networking capitals, current assets minus current liabilities, cash plus securities plus receivables plus inventories minus payables. We're interested in the change in networking capital. So how do we compute that? Well, first, let's assume that if the project starts at time zero, just before the project starts, there's no networking capital. Therefore, the initial change, the change at time zero is simply equal to what that initial level is. So oftentimes, if we start a project, we're going to need inventory. It's often, I think, easiest to talk about inventory. So time zero, you got to buy some inventory. That's the change. You went from having no networking capital to having some right when the project started. So the change at time zero is just equal to whatever that level is at time zero. What's the level at time one? or the change at time one, the ch change at time one is equal to the level at time one minus the level at time zero. So it's the level at time one minus the level at time zero. At time two, it's equal to the level at time two minus the level at time one. So again, we use the old accounting that the, you know, let's say time one here, it's the end of this period, but it's also the beginning of this period. So the general is that the change at a given point or you know, over a period for a given point in time, so the change at time t is equal to what the level is at time t minus what the level was one period before. And we're going to assume you know, that we're looking at kind of discrete points in time. So when we talk about the change over you know, period one, it gets incorporated here. Why is it relevant? Let's look at how it affects cash flow. So remember, networking capital is cash plus securities plus receivables plus inventories minus payables. When networking capital goes up, when it increases over a period, when the change is positive, that has a negative effect on cash flow, all else equal. Let's look at a couple of reasons why. Number one, cash, if networking capital goes up, because cash goes up, why did cash go up? It's because the firm had to take it in its pocket and put it in the project. Taking it out of your pocket, negative cash flow. 
receivables. Why do receivables go up? Receivables go up because a sale was made and that increases operating cash flow, but there's no cash. The company made the sale and operating cash flow recorded it, but no cash actually came in, so you need to undo it. And that's why we can incorporate it here in change in networking capital. Inventories increase. Let's say the beginning of the project, inventories go up. Well, how'd they go up? You paid for them, all else equal, cash went down. And finally, what if payables go down? If payables go down, networking capital goes up. But why do payables go down? Because you pay them off with cash. So just an idea as to the relevance. So it becomes more than a mechanical exercise of just addition and subtraction. I want students to have a sense of why incorporating the change in networking capital is important. Let's look at the flip side. If networking capital goes down, the change is negative, all else equal, positive effect on cash flow. Again, cash goes down. Why does that happen? All else equal, because the firm is getting ca taking cash out of the project. The project is kicking cash. That's a positive cash flow. Receivables. If receivables go down, it's because customers are paying off their accounts receivable, which is putting cash, all else equal, that's a positive cash flow. Inventories go down. Inventories go down, networking capital goes down. What does inventories going down mean? That means sales are being made. Um, and there's an expense associated with that um, on the operating cash flow side. But there's no cash associated with that because the cash happened when the inventories were purchased. And so it offsets the, as I characterize it there, misleading operating cash flow. And finally, if payables go up, that means there's an expense, which has an effect on operating cash flow, but the firm didn't actually have to pay it. So the cash flow effect is offsetting, again, the misleading operating cash flow. You have an expense there, uh, but no cash is paid out, as we can see from uh, payables going up, meaning the supplier said, you don't have to pay us, you can pay us later. So all else equal, um, no cash took place, and it was um, inaccurate by reflecting an operating cash flow. So Again, it's just a basic idea of why we want to pay attention to changes in networking capital to give students a general flavor of the kinds of things that could influence it and why it's important to take into account. So let's we can measure networking capital at specific points in time. We know how to get the change. In order to get the cash flow effect, which is the thing we're really interested in, we simply take the opposite of it. When networking capital goes down, so the change is negative, cash flows increase, all else equal. When networking capital goes up, change it. When, so when networking capital goes down, cash goes up. When networking capital goes up, the cash flow is negative. So unless told otherwise, in problems, assume that figures that are given for current assets, current liabilities, networking capital, the change, and the cash flow effects are incremental and relevant for the project. So if you're given information that's relevant for figuring out the cash flow effects from change in networking capital, you can work with them in the way we're about to in an example and the way we've talked about um, without having to question whether they're incremental or not. They are. So we have a firm, they're considering a three-year project, and we have relevant networking capital, which remember that's uh, balance sheet items, so these are levels, 15,000 today, which means time zero, 12,000 in one year, and 14,000 in two years. What would the cash flow effect be with respect to the change in networking capital today, time zero, in one year, and in two years? So we're going to follow three basic steps. Number one, find the networking capital at every relevant point in time. That's pretty easy in this project because it's given, but some situations, you know, given current assets, current liabilities, uh, you may be working with the balance sheet to figure out levels of cash, securities, receivables, payables, and have to put it together. The point is, find the level at the relevant points in time. Two, find the change, and that's easy. At time zero, the change is the level, and at all other times, it's just equal to the level at that point in time minus the level at the previous point in time. 
and then find the cash flow effect, and that's simply the opposite of the change in networking capital. So the example that we're about to do hopefully will illustrate that as long as you understand these basic relationships that are simply predicated on addition and subtraction, incorporating the change in networking capital, the cash flow effects of that, is very straightforward. So step one, find networking capital of a relevant point. These are given. So you can see at time zero, it's 15,000. Time one, it's 12,000. And time two, it's 14,000. Now we got to figure out the change at every point in time. Well, remember, if we assume it's zero just before the beginning, and then it goes to 15, what's the change? 15 minus zero, the change is 15,000. One period later, one year later, it's 12,000. If it went from 15 to 12, it went down 3. But you can also get that as 12,000 minus 15,000, negative 3,000. Time 2 is 14,000. 12 to 14 is plus 2, and you can see it is 14 minus 12, 2,000. So we've got our changes. And that's what we just did there. So if we have our changes, then the cash flow effect is just the opposite of the change. So the change is 15, the cash flow effect at time 0 is negative 15,000. Time 1, remember the change was negative 3, it went down from 15 to 12, that's a positive cash flow effect. So again, why is cash flow negative 15? You can think about it as the firm had to spend 15,000 to build up inventory, which is why networking capital was 15,000. Then it went down to 12 because they sold off some of that inventory, brought in, brought in cash. Then in year 2, it was back up 2,000, so the effect on cash flow was negative 2,000. So again, it was real easy. We did some subtraction, and then the last step is we flip the sign.